Welcome to Adco Aviation. On the 18th video, I discussed the control stick of my Legal Eagle XL build. Today I want to finish the fuselage and discuss the floorboard and the firewall. As I stated in the last video, the first piece I should have completely welded together should have been station number one, including the tubes that hold the aluminum bushings. Unfortunately, I did not do this. I had to drill the holes and weld them inside and out at all kinds of weird angles. Just do it when you start your build, while you're flat on the bench. You'll be so much the happier for it. I don't have any pictures for you on this step. I thought I had taken pictures, but when I went to download them from my phone, there was nothing new to download. Basically, I cut the one and one eighth inch tubing, one and one eighth inch long, Chuck them up in a lathe and chamfered both ends to 45 degrees. Then drilled one and one eighth inch holes in the heavy plates on station number one. Started with the pilot holes and built up in size. Finally using a stepper bit to finish up. That was rough on the wrist. Now let's talk spacing of these holes. The plans almost tell you all you need to know. It doesn't, however, tell you where the 7 and 13 16 inch spacing and the 1 and a quarter inch spacing line up. In other words, do the left two mounts line up and the right two sides are offset or vice versa? Well, let me clear this up. I went to a transaxle on an old beetle I had and took some measurements. Basically, you want the top and the bottom to be centered left and right on your firewall and as the drawing shows eight and a half inches away from each other from top to bottom so in other words all measurements would be centered from the center line once i had the holes correctly drilled i added some lightning holes some small holes that will hold the rudder pedal springs as well as four holes for mounting the aluminum firewall I will be using a number three bolt with aluminum spacers to hold the firewall snug in place and keep it from vibrating around. Next I made the aluminum bushings. I started with a one inch 6061 aluminum rod I bought from Amazon. It needed to be turned down slightly to fit inside the one and one eighth inch tubes. Once the outside diameter was correct, I needed to drill out the inside to approximately six tenths of an inch in order for the rubber mounts to fit inside. I then chopped them off to the correct length to fit inside the one and one eighth inch tubes and chamfer both of those ends. One down, three to go. Finally, let's talk floorboards. Before installing the floorboard, make sure you drill your holes for the cotter pins that hold the rudder pedals in. I wanted my pins to be horizontal so they wouldn't get into the bottom Dacron and knew I wouldn't be able to drill them out after mounting the floorboard. Of course keeping everything as light as possible and since my feet will never be beyond the pedals, I cut off the topmost point Leonard has on the front of his floorboard. So maybe a square foot or so of aluminum which would be a little over 3.6 ounces but I added 2.7 ounces of foam to the bottom and maybe an ounce of glue. So a net zero as far as weight, but I'm very pleased with the end results. So let's discuss how I got there. I was thinking of cardboard. You know how flimsy just the outer layer of paper would be by itself, but you add the filler paper in the middle and it stiffens up remarkably well, considering you've only added a little more paper or plywood how each layer is super flimsy, but once they're glued together, well, you get the idea. So I wondered just how much stiffer the floorboard would be if I added a layer of foam to it. And I had scrap three quarter inch foam, so I cut them to basic shapes. 
and then took them to the belt sander and ground off a layer till I was close to 5 8 inch thick, the same as my lower Longeron tubes. It would have been a lot easier and slightly lighter if I had half inch foam with probably the same results. Anyways, I used a number 3 Phillips screwdriver to punch out holes basically every 1 inch or so. I figured this would lighten the foam and more importantly give the expanding glue more surface area to adhere to. I used the original Gorilla Glue. I first sanded and cleaned the aluminum and applied a thin layer of glue to it. I then misted the foam pretty heavily and placed it on the bottom side of the floorboard. Covered the foam with a scrap piece of 3 quarter inch plywood and placed anything I could find on top of it for 24 hours to help clamp or hold the plywood down to the foam and aluminum floorboard. Once dried, it should never delaminate even with movement and vibration. Once the weather warms a tad, I will also glue the bottom of the Dacron piece to the foam as well. That will also hold it in place and help stiffen up the floorboard even more. Also note, I did fold the front edge of the aluminum over and left just under a 5 8 inch lip hanging down. This helps stiffen and support the frontmost edge of the aluminum. I have sat in several legal eagles now and call me partial, but I'm very pleased with the feel of this floorboard. It keeps the spirit of Leonard's design and seems to be a nice improvement without adding much, if any weight at all, from the original design. I'm working on the landing gear now and hopefully soon we'll have a video on that. I know I had many landing gear questions and not a lot of info out there on this subject, so hopefully I'll answer those questions. Anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this video and hopefully found some of the info helpful for your build. If you're on the fence about starting a legal eagle build, hopefully I've shown you just how easy it can be. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe to my YouTube, Odyssey, or Rumble channel. Thank you and be safe.